Hi everyone, my name is Allison and I'm entering my 2B term of Honors Math this fall, um, but I'll actually be hosting a session today. So I'd like to introduce our uh, panelists for the Honors Math program huddles um, and I'll let them introduce themselves. So let's start with Melissa. Um, hi everyone, so uh, my name is Melissa. Um, I'm going to my third year of Information Technology Management, which is a math business major. Awesome, thank you, Melissa. And then we can uh, introduce Aparash. Uh, hi, thank you, Alison. Uh, so hi, everyone, I'm uh, Apiraj. I'm in my third year of Community Works and Optimization with a minor in Awesome, and then for students, feel free to put your questions in the Q&A box, and then we'll get started in a few minutes. Awesome. Okay. Thank you guys so, so much again. Um, I hope this was fun for you. Um, yeah. Best of luck this term. That's, that's kind of all for me. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, thank you for hosting and everything. I'm sorry about my internet. No, no, no. It was good. There was only a few times where it was a little choppy, but uh, with our recording, I think we're going to be able to add captions anyway. So um, yeah, it should be good. If, if there's anything that I feel like is, is missed out or anything, I'll reach out to you and just make sure I can confirm. What your point was but i think everything was covered especially with you and melissa kind of helping each other out um we should be good so yeah <laughs> great thank you so much yeah no problem no enjoy enjoy uh, your guys's free time hopefully before the start of the term and best of luck with everything thanks you too you too bye-bye bye, -bye. Uh, um in terms of your first year experience, I guess, if you, if you were able to go back, I guess, with the knowledge you have now, is there anything that you uh, would do differently in terms of maybe like classes or, or outside in the social aspect or, you know, resident, any, anything really? Um, I think one thing I would do differently would be, uh, so I, I'm I'm currently involved with uh, MathSoc, but I got involved with them in my second year. And one thing I would have done differently would be to get involved with MathSoc in my very first term, where, because honestly, um, that's been some of the most interesting, uh, most fun activities I've been involved in so far. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I think that would be, and also academically, I think I would uh, try to look at what uh, um, minors or uh, something I would want to take because that really helps you organize your courses as opposed to figuring it out in your third year. Uh, you, I mean, you, you can definitely figure that stuff out in later years as well. Just the, the only benefit of figuring it out earlier is that you can uh, start taking uh, your non-math courses accordingly because you only have a limited number of non-math courses. Um, I think for me, it would to it would be to sort of participate more in like student life and join clubs and sort of meet other people who aren't in the same program as you are in. It gets sort of drowning when all your friends are just people who are in your class and it, um, it's a lot more fun if you meet other students who are in different programs and who are interested in different things other than just math, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we have one question that's been asked by Madison. So um, I think I've signed that to Apraj, but I think both of you can answer this one probably. Um, so Madison wants to know if I have co-op my first year, uh, or sorry, my first year summer, when would I start applying for jobs? Um, okay, that's a great question. So if you have a co-op uh, in the summer, that means you would start applying for jobs at the beginning of the previous term. That is, so you'll start applying for jobs uh, sometime in January. And uh, you can, uh, so that is what, using Waterloo Works. People do apply externally to jobs as well, which you can do at your own timeline, which means you can start earlier. But given that it's your first year, I would advise using your uh, first term, like your fall term, to uh, uh, fall term and the beginning of 
uh, you went to to figure out what kinds of jobs you wanted to apply to, uh, what you need to apply to those jobs, and then do it. So I would advise you to wait till the end January, beginning of Feb, uh, time when uh, the school uh, school system what do works, which is the portal we used to apply for jobs, when that opens. Thank you. Um, uh, just just for Melissa and I guess both of our panelists, feel free if a question hasn't been assigned to you to jump in if you'd like to add anything, but also if you feel like it's been covered, it's all good. Um, so Robin has asked our next question. Um, what are the procedures with choosing majors and what are the grade requirements for more competitive majors such as computer science, actuarial science, and data science? Um, so before I let our panelists jump in, I just wanted to let you know that um, for choosing majors, you can always contact your academic advisor. Um, and for the competitive majors, as you've mentioned, um, you can find this information on the respective uh, sites for each of those majors. Um, but I will let uh, maybe Melissa share her experience or, or Abhiraj on um, picking a major and um, I guess how the process works. Um, well, obviously for the more competitive majors, uh, it's more challenging to get in as they only accept a certain number of people but that varies from year to year on like the grade requirements so the best thing you can do is just to reach out to the academic advisor or like the or a staff advisor who's sort of in charge of those programs and um see what the grade requirements are for the year and how to work towards that and as for choosing a major um it happens uh in second year so at the end of first year um, there's a form on, uh, there's a form online. You get reminded with an email to choose um, a major, but there's a form online that you can find it's super easy. Um, and you fill that out and you with what um, major you want to choose, and then you just submit it to um, I think the math department as well as the staff advisor of that major, and then and it's super easy and it just goes from there. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Um, just to sort of piggyback on that, so there's uh, some majors that you need to, so you can you can declare your major as early as second year, um, and there's some majors where, you know, that would be necessary because they have a lot more required courses, um, but, it, you know, depending on what major you choose, I, I, I believe, and maybe um, Avraj, you can jump in and confirm here, but I believe you can uh, declare your major all the way up until, you know, before you graduate, as long as you have all the required courses uh, for that major. I'm sorry, Alison, I didn't catch you. Pardon? I, I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't catch the question. I'm sorry. But... No, 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 that's okay. I, I just, I, um, is it true that I guess you can declare your major all the way up until graduation, like before you graduate, as long as you have those required courses? I believe that's the case. Um, so you don't have to declare it as sort of second year. But you can. Yeah, so I believe you have to declare like uh, some major by the end of your, um, so I'm a little, I'm clear on this. I believe like you can't be in, in honors maths at the end of uh, second year or something. I think uh, it gets changed to mathematical studies at that point if you um, if you don't uh, uh, declare a major. But uh, but yeah, you can uh, if you you can pursue like the requirements for any of the majors and then change it right up until your graduation as far uh, as far as that. Awesome, thank you. Um, so for the next question, we have, uh, what would you recommend to help online students to make friends? That's that's an excellent question, actually. Um, so what I would say is, uh, first thing, of course, uh, the best way is to join clubs, join um, uh, math stuff would be a great uh, way to get involved. With, uh, there are academic clubs, there are social clubs. Uh, those are great opportunities to get involved. So that would definitely be one of the main things. Uh, another thing I would suggest is uh, reach out to people from uh, cl uh, classes that you're taking, as like Melissa mentioned earlier. Reach out to people who are taking the same courses as you are. Uh, reach out to other first year students. So the, that's another great way. Uh, 
I understand like uh, it's a little difficult to do this online because uh, you don't really get to meet other people you, uh, you're doing classes online so uh, I understand the difficulty which comes with that but uh, uh, but that just means that you need um, like so if you're online and uh, it's not uh, it's gonna be difficult for it to happen organically uh, outside of clubs and societies which still have meetings you still get to meet people but outside of those, it's not going to happen organically. You will have to um, reach out to people. You will have to actively uh, try to do that. But, um, but but it's not impossible, and that's the great thing. Because I've been like we've all been online for over a year now, and uh, met so many new people online. So it definitely happens, and definitely and Waterloo is definitely a great place to meet people. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, like joining clubs would be really helpful. And it's just like because it's so online, it it can't happen naturally. You have you can't be scared. You just have to reach out to people and introduce yourself first, um, you know, with your name, your program, and whatnot. And I think that's sort of the best way to meet people, especially since it's online. You have to be um sort of taking the initiative to introduce yourself first is the best way, I think. Yeah, 100 percent. Um, just to add on to that, I guess, uh, especially for online students or I know in, in my first year experience, uh, things weren't online, but everyone or maybe not everyone, but most people. And I think you know, Melissa and Afaraj would agree. Everyone's kind of desperate to have friends. No one no one knows that many people, even if they come with friends from high school. Um, so even though it might seem you know weird or, or difficult to sort of reach out and, and make that step, as Melissa mentioned, um, there, there's very few people who, who would be opposed to, um, I guess, having a new study partner or a new friend in, in an online or in-person class. Um, so our next question is, uh, what sort of co-op jobs have you had? So I'm currently not in co-op, but I've known people in co-op who have, who've had um, jobs as like software developer, your backend developer, um, who are in CS. And I've also had a friend who wasn't in CS, um, like just in math. Uh, she was just an, an analyst for a company. Um, there's just a lot of jobs that you can find online, and um, there there are jobs that you can find outside of um, the Waterloo sort of website for applying for jobs. Um, you can you can apply on your own on, on whatever you know a website that you can find as long as it gets approved um as long as like any, any job gets approved you're, you're good to go it doesn't have to be um very like math related or math heavy as long as um the job you apply for gets approved by the co-op advisors then it, any job should work Yeah, for sure. I just want to make sure. Aparaj, do you have anything you want to add to that? So yeah, I would agree with what Melissa said. Like, I suppose... Oh, sorry. I think I, I was kind of... Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, I would agree with what Melissa said, that there are like, lots of job opportunities available. Us personally, so I'm going to be uh, starting my second co-op this fall. Uh, I had my first co-op uh, uh, this winter, which was... Um, I worked as an R&D engineer with a fi uh, fintech startup. And uh, this fall, I'm going to be working as a continuous improvement analyst with Purelator. So as you can see, there's like, uh, there's like, uh, both of them are different kinds of jobs. I, um, I'm going to be learning different things at each of them. Uh, people are also, and uh, uh, people are also able to work in with finance, with technology, uh, in academia, with the. Uh, uh, I know, like, if you're a Canadian if a citizen, then there have been some cryptology-related defense uh, jobs. So, uh, so there, there's a wide range of jobs. So, uh, that's uh, that's definitely great. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so, for our next question, um, can math students be more than two majors? Um, so it kind of depends on your program, um, to my knowledge, and maybe I'll let Abhraj and, and Melissa sort of back me up here. Um, so there are some math 
uh, majors that have sort of a joint program, so you can do um, a combinatorics and optimization and math teaching, for example. Um, so that kind of allows you to, to take on two different uh, majors in a way. Um, I'm not sure about majors outside of the Faculty of Math, so if you wanted to do one internally and one externally, um, but I would recommend looking at the undergraduate studies calendar for all of that information. Um, yeah, Alkaraj and Melissa, anything to, to add there? Yeah, I can uh, go down. Sorry, this. I feel a little worried. Uh, what I was saying was, so you, so you can do a double major. I, I know someone who uh, graduated last year with a triple major as well. Um, so that's, so you can definitely do it if you're able to do all the requirements. As Alison mentioned, there are also joints, which mean so while in a double major, you'll be ready to, full, to finish all uh, the requirements of both majors. So in joints, uh, you have reduced requirements for each of the majors you want to take, uh, which makes it easier to combine them. Uh, uh, as uh, with regards to doing courses from other faculties, uh, you cannot. Uh, Combine like us. Uh, so I know about this by the Faculty of Arts. I'm not sure about the other faculties. So you can combine uh, a math program with a joint honors from a, from a Faculty of Arts program. However, you can't combine that with a math joint, which means you would need to fulfill all, all the requirements. And, uh, and then it also do the requirements for the joint uh, in the arts faculty. So that's the thing. If you're doing a BCS though, uh, Bachelor's of Computer Science, then you can combine a joint BCS with the joint from another faculty. Awesome, thank you. Um, so for our next question, it's um, kind of related. Uh, can you major in something and minor in something? How do minors work? Um, I, I can answer that. So, uh, so yeah, that's a good question. So yes, you can major and mine something. So minors have, uh, so like I mentioned, how joints have uh, fewer requirements than full majors. Uh, minors uh, are supposed to be about eight courses. So uh, that's great. You can minor in um, most programs. So your minor does not need to be a, a math math minor. It could be um, a minor from outside the faculty of math. And also, it helps if there's an overlap. Uh, for example, I'm currently majoring in computer and optimization, and I'm minoring in pure maths. Uh, luckily, there's an overlap between the two programs, which means There only, there's, the only, there's only a difference of two required courses between my uh, CO major and uh, a pure math minor. So that's great. You, and you can minor in multiple uh, subjects as well. I'm currently uh, enrolled in, uh, like along with my pure math minor, I'm also enrolled in an English minor. So that's, uh, so that's definitely uh, an option for you. Uh, so that's right. You, you like. Uh, it, it's good to explore what. Uh, as I mentioned, that you can double count courses, but you can't. But I believe there's a rule against triple counting. So you you need to keep. Uh, so you just need to keep that in mind. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think I think you might have, Wi Fi might be a bit uh, a bit touchy up Raj. It might it might be just me, but um, I'll give you a minute there if you want to check your connectivity, and we'll throw the next question to uh, Melissa. Um, so someone asks, um, how should those who aren't in co-op but still wish to work on the first year, uh, I'm assuming maybe they mean first year like in the summer term, uh, how should they prepare ahead? Um, will they have the same time schedule? Will they begin preparing their resume um, at the same time as co-op students? 
um, if you're not in co-op, you can sort of take it as on your own schedule. You can also follow like the co-op schedule if you would want. Um, it depends on which sort of stream you're in because different students have different schedules for co-op, like what term they work and what term they're in school. Um, so that's all up to you. Um, but to prepare, you'd have to, you know, touch up on your resume, your interview skills. Um, and um, a way that people um, like to work on their resume is to create like side projects. Um, a lot of like people on CS like to create side projects as it just um, helps enhance their skills and shows that they've been working on, um, you know, learning and trying to develop their skills instead of um, having just having them just sit there. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, for other students, I think it'd be helpful to sort of join like clubs and councils and to show your initiative of trying to get out there and create, you know, find connections to other people and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I think that's like that's the way to help with co-op if you're not in the co-op program. Um, it's easiest to just go at your own at your own pace. You can also you can always you know apply for jobs um, on like regular portals online. Um, you can Google jobs, see if any maybe if, like um, friends in co-op can find any you know open um, applications for you. That could also work. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, just to piggyback on that, uh, Melissa, I think um, having so sort of what Melissa said, having like experiences, I guess, inside and outside of the classroom is is relevant. So um, for, for honors math, for example, you're learning a lot of uh, valuable skills um, within this program for um, for co-op or for job opportunities, but also, um, you know, participating in clubs and things like that. Like Melissa said, it, it's a way to show kind of what you're passionate about, too. So if you're um if you care about the environment maybe you want to join a club you know, related to that and that that could boost you in a in a position where that might be something related um so our next question actually before i get to our next question i just want to remind students um if you have questions please put them in the q a box so i think a few of you are putting them in the chat it's not a big deal but it just makes things a little bit more organized and, and easier on our end to to monitor here uh, but feel free to use the chat to, to chat with each other. Um, so for our next question, uh, what is one piece of advice you can give about how to approach lectures that are recorded? That is a great question. Um, well, the first thing I, I do is I just, I don't listen. I don't, um, when I first listen to it, I don't take notes. I sort of just like watch and listen um, to have an idea of what, the lecture is going to be about and I sort of watch this at like 1.5 speed just so it's not as slow if I can still understand everything and then after that um I you know I take notes on like what was important as like a second run through I think that's really helpful because if I was because I, I used to take notes on just like the first run through and call it a day but I found myself sort of like on autopilot where I would just like copy down the words and even though it was it was fast, I learned absolutely nothing. So um, going through it twice and listening it listening to it the first time and then copy and then writing down the notes the second time really helped with that. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think that makes perfect sense, Melissa. Um, Cloud Crush, are you able? I just want to make sure if you're still here, or do you have anything to piggyback? I guess onto that. Um. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I just turned my video off to conserve bandwidth. Uh, so taking as a so speaking about notes, my approach is a little different with uh, math course, especially. I'm more of a practice uh, practicing guy as opposed to a notes guy. So I don't really except sometimes I might I might make a small note here or there regarding uh, certain formulas or uh, certain things which I need to go through again. But what I mostly try and do is I practice the assignment questions and other questions. So that's how I usually do those courses. Uh, for, uh, uh, if anyone's interested for non -mind math courses, I've taken a bunch of English and like other arts related courses. So for those, I usually um, 
just uh, so I try to do the reading before the classes and uh, make some notes myself. And afterwards, uh, a lot of these courses are very discussion based. So I try to uh, make those courses based on whatever discussions we have. Awesome, thank you. Um, someone asks, uh, oops, sorry. Someone asks, what do you recommend uh, for new students to do besides studying? Great question. Besides studying at night? Yeah, and yeah, anytime, I guess. But yeah, what, what should new students do besides studying? Um, I guess definitely hang out with friends, uh, with anyone, even if you just go out by yourself and, you know, go for a walk or, you know, eat out for lunch by yourself. That's still, like, that's still a nice break from studying and it lets your mind, you know, relax and get out of that, like, school mindset. Um, another one would be to, jo to join, you know, clubs, councils that also helps get your mind off of math and just gives a nice um, break for you once in a while. Um, hang out with friends, you know, anything to just get your mind off, off of school, even if it's just a walk uh, is really helpful instead of just studying all day. But yeah. Yeah, to add to that, um... Well, firstly, I, I want to reiterate the points regarding like going out with friends and also joining clubs and society. Uh, because like university is a very important time to build your uh, like so to enjoy your social life, to build your network. Uh, and, and these things are as important as academics. So that's, uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, I would also encourage, uh, you know, uh, pursuing uh, some a hobby, uh, some non-academic hobby, so that you always have something uh, to do when you want to take your mind off studying. Uh, again, joining clubs and uh, stuff helps over there. For example, uh, so if you're interested in writing, you could write for the imprint. Uh, if you're interested in music, there are a bunch of uh, music related clubs uh, so yeah like i would recommend you guys to go to the Busa's website uh, busa.ca and uh, see their list of clubs see if there's something you're interested in uh, you you can like if you can't find a club you're interested in you can also create your own club if you have enough interested people for that so that's there uh, if any of you're interested in student government and uh, that kind of thing working like working with Busa or working with MathSoc are great opportunities. Uh, like I definitely, as I mentioned, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite things about the university has been my work with MathSoc. So I would definitely encourage that. Uh, but along with that, like I would again like to reiterate to like hang out with your friends, go out places like enjoy your uh, social life as well while you're in university for sure for sure yeah i, I agree with everything you guys said and just to, to add something on there um i think it's important and i think melissa and Amparaj kind of both touched on this it's important to have a hobby or activity or two that are just like pure fun or like get your mind off of things so you know it's nice to have um like clubs and activities or you know uh, projects that you're working on that are not necessarily academic, but you know, are still you know adding to your resume um, and and sort of exercising your brain. But it's nice to have you know a video game or you know going for a run, uh, going out with your friends, like something that that is just purely for fun and relaxation. Um, yeah, to, to to go back on when you're feeling maybe a little bit burnt out or stressed, um, that that would be my recommendation. Um. So there's a few students asking about taking notes in university versus high school. Um, so any note taking methods that have worked um, for either of you guys, and maybe maybe a method that didn't work if you have one in mind. I think I'll uh, like I think I mean this will be a lot of repetition as to what I said earlier, but uh, again, uh, so note taking really depends on what is the what's the best way for you to learn uh 
as I mentioned, I, I prefer, like, I think I learn best when I'm practicing, but a lot of people prefer taking notes. Uh, and one thing I've noticed about note taking for math course, especially uh, from like the advice my friends have given me and like other uh, friends of mine, like who actually take notes, is that you have to identify, uh, especially if you're taking notes during a class, you can't, uh, you, won't, you probably won't be able to note down everything the professor is saying. So you have to identify what you can easily go and refer to in the slides or book and what you want to make sure you've noted down. Or oh, if, if you're just noting down stuff so that you can remember it, if like writing stuff down helps you remember it, then uh, then that is something uh, you should probably do out like after class or uh, if you want to just take the notes like the PPTs or whatever you've given and uh, make notes from that. But during classes, uh, I think the biggest thing is to identify uh, what uh, what are the most important points you need to note down and just note them. Um, yeah, just adding on to what you said, uh, I think every prof sort of does like notes differently. Sometimes they go really in depth on their notes during class. Um, so that's a lot to copy down or a lot to sort of take in. Um, and some, some profs sort of don't really do that many notes or like don't have many things written down and they just, just talk a lot with a lot of examples. So that's also something to, to realize. Um, like every class, you might go to one class where, you know, it's a lot of writing, a lot of notes, and it's not as much listening, but in your next class, it might be, you know, a lot of listening and not as many, as not, and not as much note taking. Um, in one class, I remember taking, um, it wasn't like a core math class, but it was math related where um, the prof wouldn't take any notes and he wouldn't upload anything either. So the entire class was just you trying to listen and sort of take in what's the important information and write that down. So I think that's um, sort of one thing that's different from high school is that they sometimes they won't have notes written out for you and you just have to go by ear and see what's important right on the spot. For sure, yeah, thank you both of you. Um, so students want to know, what are some tips you can give for exam season? For um, exam season, I would, uh, oh. sorry. You can, uh, you can go first. So yeah, I think I have an issue with my internet, so I might have missed that. Uh, uh, why don't you go ahead? I'll just figure out this issue till then. Sorry. No, 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 no worries. I think I think we can hear you great. Uh, Avraj, you, you should go first, and then uh, Melissa will kind of piggyback onto your ideas here. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, so um, I was just saying, season for thing. Uh, I'll reiterate this practice, I believe, is like, especially for math uh, courses, like practicing questions. Uh, but apart from like the academic stuff, like I think a very important aspect of uh, exam season is rest. Because uh, Firstly, no, no exams worth your mental health. That's the most important thing. But more importantly, e even in, like even if it's uh, even if you're worried about the exam that much, I should uh, like if you're not slept well, if you're not well rested, uh, that can have an adverse effect on your your exam. You're tired. You may not be able to perform well in the day off. So rest, eat, sleep. Like just self care is very important during like throughout the year, but especially during exam season. Yeah. So just to add on to that, I remember during in my first year in, at my orientation, um, one of the orientation leaders had a story where during um, his first year exam season, he got so stressed that he kind of forgot to eat, and you think that. 
like, you know, how is that really possible? How could you forget to eat? Um, but it very much is possible when you're very stressed. Um, you know, exam season is, is really difficult. It's really stressful, especially like taxing on your body. Um, so it can be easy to like forget to sleep, forget to drink water, forget to eat, but that's really, really important. Like, um, like Abarash said, and another thing would be to start super early. Like you would think that maybe like one or two weeks in advance is just, is, is fine. It's enough time, but I think to be safe and to sort of counteract, you know, your procrastination is to start super, super, super early. Even if it's just, you know, going over old notes or going over, you know, um, past questions and whatnot um, is, uh, would be really, would be an advantage to exam season to just start early. For sure, yeah, just to-, to If I can just- to... uh... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Abraj. So I was just gonna add one more point, like, uh, which was related to Melissa's last point regarding starting early. Like, just remember that uh, it's a, like, learning is like a continuous process. So you have to, like, so you have to, like, if you're starting throughout the term, if you're doing your assignments, if you're working, uh, like, working on your courses throughout the term, you, you will, uh, exam season will not be uh, uh, much tougher because you've been doing it. Uh, that's like a very important thing to remember. You cannot do the entire an entire four month course in two weeks, so you have to uh, you have to study throughout the term. Yeah, for sure. Um, just one more point I wanted to add on there. Something something that was uh, difficult for me, like from transitioning from high school to university, is that depending on sort of when your exams are scheduled. Um, classes might end, you know, on a, on a Monday and you might not have an exam until, you know, Friday or the, the week after. So um, for me, at least in high school, we had sort of classes end one day and uh, exams be, you know, consecutive one exam per day, the four days following. Um, so it kind of made you study during class time and ask you questions then. Uh, but having all, all the free time between exams uh, for me made me think, you know, I have lots of time to look at stuff. Um, but to, to reiterate uh, both of our panelists points. Starting early is super important, especially when uh, you still have lecture time and office hour time left to ask uh, questions for your professors. Um, yeah. So someone wants to know uh, when we're in class, is there a seating arrangement the instructor that the instructor makes? Um, are we allowed to sit anywhere we'd like? Um, usually in first year, since the classes, like the math classes are super, super large, there aren't going to be seating arrangements um, just because it'd be really tough to see everyone. And sometimes there are students who come in from, you know, a class that they've missed maybe the day before or something like that, but they want to come in again. So it's usually um, you sit wherever you want. Um, and I haven't really had experience in a math class where someone would seat you. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I've had the same experience as uh, Melissa, but I just wanted to point out that during um, this upcoming semester and you know semesters that follow um, with respect to COVID, there there is the potential for seating arrangements, um, depending on you know your class size and, and things like that to accommodate uh, physical distancing. Um, but typically in a, in a world without COVID, I guess I, I would agree there's there's usually no um, seating arrangements and um, from my experience, like people don't even really sit in like the same seat every day. I mean, some people do, but you know what I mean? You don't have to sort of sit in the same spot that you did the last class. Um, so it's different from high school in that way as well. So for our next question, um, how much of the things covered in class appear on exams? Do you have to study extra things that are not covered in class? Um, usually, um, the things that are on the exam is what is typically covered in class. Um, I don't think I've had a time where something that wasn't covered in class be on the exam, but you can also, like, you can always clarify that with the professor, you know, ask them for maybe a general um, guideline for what's going to be on the exam, maybe like what topics that we've covered in class are going to be on it. Um, and usually, almost all the things are on the exam in one way or another. Maybe if that's a, like a multiple choice or if it's in like a small short answer question, 
um, it's safe to say that to study everything and to just know everything instead of memorizing it, just be familiar with the topics and how they link to each other. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that makes perfect sense. Um, I'll give that a second for Akaraj in case he wants to add anything there. Yeah, I think um, this has covered more or less everything that that your exams will cover the entire syllabus in one way or another. But uh, at least in my experience, I haven't had an exam where uh, things which weren't covered in class. Uh, like uh, were part of the exam, so that's uh, that's been my experience. For sure, for sure. Um, I think I guess just to add on to those points too. Um, I, I've I've had similar experiences uh, for from both of our, our with both of our panelists. Um, so every every sort of topic that was covered in class uh, appeared on the exam, and every topic on the exam has appeared in class. Um, but sometimes there are you know, like Melissa mentioned, like links between topics. So maybe um, I hadn't thought about that relationship between two topics and the professor didn't explicitly mention it, but it sort of takes some extra thinking. So it's not necessarily something you're not going to be exposed to, um, but it might, you know, challenge your thinking during an exam or have a little uh, note in one of your readings the professor maybe didn't explicitly go over. So um, if you're keeping up with your notes and attending all lectures, there won't be any kind of topics on the exam that you would have never heard of before but there could be a question or two you know posed in a different way than you've been used to um, in terms of like course material um, so student wants to know um, i noticed that it looks like lecture time for university is a lot less than lecture time for high school how much time do you typically need to study for each course outside of lecture time and what else do you occupy your time with other than studying so in terms of um, occupying your time with other than studying, since we already kind of cover that in terms of uh, clubs and extracurriculars, hanging out with friends, doing side projects, um, I'm just going to let our panelists answer the first part of that question. Um, so how much time do you typically need to study for each course outside of lecture time? Um, I think it depends. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. You can go first. You can go, uh, and I'll go after you. No, please go ahead. Sorry about that. Okay, so it really depends from person to person, as well as what class you're in, because um, in first year, I've noticed that, you know, maybe, maybe in an algebra class, um, one friend would take, you know, maybe like an hour after class every day, or someone or someone else would take like, you know, the entire day after class to sort of go over and to under, really understand what was happening in class. So again, it, it depends from person to person, as well as like the topics that was covered that were covered. Um, depending on how you learn and how well you absorb the information. Um, but a lot of people sort of study a little bit every single day instead of cramming it all in one day, if that helps. I think um, that definitely helps a lot with learning. Um, but yeah, it depends from person to person as well as the course you're in or the amount of time studying. So I think like Melissa has covered it really well that uh, uh, any course will take outside of uh, class, but uh, uh, it really depends on how, what course it is and how and how easy or difficult you find it. What what the best way for you to study is, how much time you think should go in it. Uh, so. I think that about uh, how is it, and that's and I, I think it's like really important to like understand, figure out which course requires how much time for you, because you can't, uh, um, uh, because you can't say that like you can't see what some of your friends are doing. So maybe one of your friends is taking an hour apart from uh, outside of class for a particular course. Uh, so you think that's what you need to be doing as well, but. Uh, that may not necessarily be the case. It's really important to see how 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 important like how much time you yourself need to put in because it, that course might be easier for them 
it might be more difficult for you, it might be more difficult for them, it might be easier for you. So all these factors are definitely something you should keep in mind. For sure. Yeah, thank you both. Uh, so someone wants to know, um, say I'm not able to attend class for some reason. Would it be possible for me to attend the morning section of the same class instead? Would I need to let the professor know? In general, if I miss class, am I able to email the prof like in high school? Thank you. To answer that question, um, most courses don't have mandatory attendance. And also for a lot of courses, you can go and sit in someone, some other professor's class as well. Uh, except when there's a logistical issue. Uh, so uh, basically what I mean is currently with COVID-19 uh, restrictions, I think it'll be a little difficult to go to other uh, other other screen other classes and you might have to uh get special permission for this because there are social distancing and capacity uh, and class capacity rules in effect but uh, in a regular non coronavirus term uh, people definitely do do that that they go to um they go to whatever classes are comfortable what can mean for them especially especially sometimes there's a professor a lot of uh, a lot of students like so and not everyone can be in that class so they may try and do that uh, uh i don't think that would work right now as i mentioned earlier because of the covid but yeah and some courses also might have mandatory attendance and if that is the case then again um you'll have to take it up with your uh, professor. Um, I think Avaraj um, answered that question super well. Um, and just to add on, if you do miss a class in general, um, usually you do email your prof if, um, if you have like a mandatory attendance or if they specify that they want to be emailed. Um, usually that's not the case, but again, you never know. So, um, yeah, with, uh, it depends from professor to professor, but um, if there is mandatory attendance and you do happen to miss a class, then um, usually you do email them just to let them know um, why you would be missing it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, thank you both. Um, this information usually is uh, outlined on the class syllabus as well. So. Uh, you'll be able to know this right at the beginning of the term, and if not, you can always clarify with your professor during the first week of classes. Uh, so someone wants to know, what kind of side projects can we do during the school term? So I'll be honest, I haven't really worked on a lot of side projects, so I'm just going to give examples of some, what some of my friends have done. Um, so a bunch of, uh, so I, I I know that it helps a lot if you participate in a hackathon because you will have to create something uh, for that. I know a bunch of my friends uh, worked on this small project where uh, they, they it was an AI project where uh, they were using the camera to see if a person was smiling or uh, frowning or whatever and trying to figure that out. So you know stuff like that or uh, if it's usable in a practical context it's even better one of my friends made uh, like one of my friends uh, uh, he was part of a group and they made this project where you can um like open your phone's camera and if you point it at a particular restaurant uh, or building and it'll it'll use I think with the help of Google Maps or something, it links to uh, their Yelp page or Google searches that uh, plays and like shows their Yelp page and everything. So that's uh, uh, so that's something. Again, as I mentioned, I've personally not really worked on a lot of side projects. So uh, as like so, so, so these are just. Um, so just to add on to that, um, if you're 
wanting to start something simple, um, you don't have to do complicated or like more you know, advanced things like that, like creating an app or something, or something like that, or creating a website. Um, I've known people who just, you know, start simple with a, a, a game of Hangman, and that's also a side project. Um, it could be something very, very advanced. It could be something very simple. Anything really goes for side projects. There aren't really any um, rules for it. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Uh, someone wants to know if they are interested in continuing learning in a post-grad institution after this program. How realistic are good grades in this program? Um, because they hear people that enter this program struggle with grades given the program's difficulty. So just how realistic are good grades with respect to entering post-grad studies after math at Waterloo? Um, the thing about good grades is, again, that um, it's an individual uh, thing. I know people who've definitely been getting uh, term distinction every term, which is, uh, I believe, 87% uh, plus. Uh, I also know people who've been, uh, who, who failed a bunch of courses. So I think it really comes down to Yes, uh, like you. Uh, but the, uh, also, another thing about grades would uh, uh, like a good way to maintain good grades would be to be strategic in terms of what courses you're taking. Like if you take if you take a lot of difficult courses in the same term, that uh, it'll be harder to manage them and uh, harder to maintain a good average. But if you take a good mix of easy and difficult courses. Uh, it would be much easier to manage and would help you maintain a better grade. So strategizing is important, especially when there's uh, so much flexibility as to what courses you can take. Uh, and of course, this is only one of the factors. Sometimes you may have to take like a bunch of difficult courses because of uh, when they're being offered. But that being said, when you can, you should always try and make sure that you take a good mix of easy and difficult courses to uh, maintain your average. Um, yeah, so just to add on, I think good grades are a lot more sort of realistic than you think. They're more achievable than you think. Um, as long as you put in the effort and the work, and um, like Abharaj said, be strategic with um, what courses you're taking and what in in a specific term. Um, they're not as difficult to get as you would think they are. Um, again, it just depends on how much work you put in and how, and if you're willing to to you know get put in the work for those good grades. Um, they're not impossible. For sure. Yeah. Thank you, both of you. Um, just looking at time, it looks like so our session is supposed to end at eleven thirty. Um, I think we can probably squeeze in one more question, but before we do that, I just wanted to uh, put in the chat some resources. Um, so in terms of if you didn't get one of your questions answered today, um, or you think of something after this session ends, uh, I'm going to paste some resources now. So there's uh, links to different things like academic advising, the undergraduate calendar, uh, campus housing, etc. So um, yeah, definitely use those resources if you have any more questions. Um, and with that, we have one more question and it's a quick one. Uh, would you recommend taking courses for a course during your co-op term? Um, so I think uh, that, again, like depends on um, I mean, it's definitely uh, man manageable because uh, co you get a lot of free time during your co-op term because uh, during your co-op terms, like except for the 40 hours that you're putting in the job, the rest of the time is completely yours. So taking an online course, uh, why don't go up is depends on whether you want to take one or whether you think you'll benefit from taking it uh, over co-op. 
things like that. But it's definitely, uh, there's definitely a lot of pros to it. Uh, if you're an international student, you might want to consider the cost as well because each uh, course would be about three and a half, four thousand dollars. So you, so do you want to take a course like that as a big factor? But uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, the pros and cons. But uh, it at the end of the day it depends on you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um... So with that, I think we're going to end our session here. Um, oh, thank you, Tristan. I think you messaged me and said some of the links are cut off in that message I posted. So I will uh, put those in the chat in a minute here. Um, yeah, so with that, we're going to end up having here. Uh, thank you so much, Melissa and Alparaj, uh, for being amazing panelists today. Um, I know, yeah, I know you answered a lot of these questions, or all these questions really well. Um, yeah, please use the resources in the chat. And... Best of luck this term for all of our new students. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alvin. And thank you everyone for your questions.